Missy Hill. And I'm Peggy Herman, and we're here to show you some pointers on bowling. Just a reminder that bowling is a whole body sport. So just like anything else, you're gonna do some warm-up exercises to get your athletes ready, arm circles, some leg stretches. Don't let them go out cold, just like you would if you were running or playing basketball. Please keep in mind that Special Olympics bowling does not use bumpers. So we just recorded these videos to provide you some techniques um, and a reminder that you may have athletes that are at several different levels. So we just want to provide as much success as we can. Okay, first thing you're gonna need to do is have the right equipment. So you're gonna either rent shoes from the bowling alley, because there's no street shoes allowed down below, and gonna try to find a ball that fits your hand. So you should not have it scrunched up too much or trying to stretch so much that you can't get your hands in the ball. So it should fit kind of like this. And weight's important because you don't want it too heavy and you don't want it too light because also you're just gonna fly it down the lane too. So make sure that you're using these two fingers and your thumb. A lot of kids or athletes when they first start wanna do this. You wanna have those two middle fingers right in there. Like many sports, bowling has a lot of different ability levels. So you're gonna have to manage the way that you do each person. Not everyone's gonna be the same. So we're gonna show you a couple different ways that you can start and maybe evolve as your bowlers get better. So Peggy's gonna show you uh, approach that doesn't have steps in it. They just go right to the line and start their bowling. Okay, so I walked up to the line and I'm gonna have my two feet together to start with. Um, it's always good to maybe take one foot back because that um, will help you modify their bowling stance so that when they do get ready to practice an approach, they know that they have um, their left foot forward for right-handed bowlers. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure my two fingers are in the correct holes, okay? And I'm just going to take a nice swing back, straight back, and I'm going to release. Okay, so moving on from standing at the foul line, um, we are going to teach a one step. Um, it's important to watch this foul line. As you can see, um, first of all, it can be a hazard. If you step on the oil lane, it could cause an athlete to fall down. Um, but also, this is what we call a foul line. So if your foot slides across that, it's called a foul, um, which can cause you to lose your score for that. Line. Okay, so now we're gonna back up and teach you the one step approach. So as you can see, I have both feet together. Again, holding the ball with the correct palm. And I'm gonna stand and angle my um, body towards the lanes and I'm gonna take one step with my left foot if I'm a right-handed bowler and I'm gonna swing back and release. Okay we talked about a foul line so we wanna like we said want to make sure they don't go past here but if your feet are here at the end that's okay. You're still gonna your ball's getting momentum from your arm not where your feet are. So even if Peggy ends here she's still okay. Okay, so now we are going to move into a four-step approach. Seems to be the average um, for the bowlers. However, it could vary from one athlete to another, so you may have to adjust depending on how big or small the athlete takes steps. So first thing we're gonna do is, um, it's important to teach your athlete the same place to stand so that when they do progress, um, they have the same place to stand every time. Um, so four-step approach, you're gonna start with your opposite leg. <laughs> You're gonna do one, two, three, bring your arm back, and release on the fourth step. Okay, so most bowling alleys, you'll see you'll have two sets of dots. Usually I recommend that the bowlers start here. This is way too far back for most of them if they're gonna do a full approach. So they're gonna need to know where they're gonna start every time. They shouldn't start here once and then here the next time. So hopefully they find the spot that's best for them. Um, in the past, the straight bowlers, if they're left-handed, we've been having them start on this far side. And if they're right-handed, we've been having them start here for their first ball. And then as they go to pick up things like the seven pin that's on the left side, they would stand on this side. If they have a ten pin, they're gonna stand here. So this is a great starter point to see where they should start every time. Okay, so Missy is gonna show us a left-handed approach. So she's got her feet lined up to the second dot from the left. Um, and she is going to make her approach and aim at that second arrow. Okay, some athletes may not have the strength to do a one-armed throw, so in that case, you can go ahead and start with a two-armed throw um, and hopefully progress to a one-armed throw as they get stronger. So in that case, you can spread your legs apart just a little bit. Aim and throw. 
So the key when releasing the ball is to make sure that your opposite foot is forward so that you make sure you don't bump your feet. You want to have a nice, smooth release. If your same foot is forward, you have the problem where you might bump your leg and that could cause you to lose control of your ball. Today Peggy's kind of going to show us how the release should look when she's going, getting ready to bowl. So she's going to do a full approach and I want you to look at her hands and see what it looks like when she releases the ball. Looks like she's kind of got a thumbs or holding a phone. This is a great way to sh show your athletes exactly where you want them to aim. They can start learning what the arrows look like. If you tell them second arrow, they're going to figure out that this is where their ball needs to be. It's a great way to be able to coach from back there. But the first couple times, you might actually need to walk up on the alley and do this. Some of your athletes, maybe that are in a wheelchair or unable to physically bowl, might need the assistance of a ramp. There's two different ways to do the ramp. If you do a ramp on assisted, they would be doing the ramp with no help from another person. Um, Peggy and I are going to show you how it would be if you had an assistant helping you right now. So Peggy would be the athlete. She'd be able to put her ball on the ramp. If she can't, we can help them do that, but they need to do the forward motion of the ball. So Peggy's going to put her ball down. And I'm going to hold this so it's steady, so the it doesn't wobble. You also have to remember the foul line, even in ramp bowling. If that goes over the foul line, it will be a foul. So Peggy's going to, I'm going to stabilize the ramp while Peggy pushes her ball. It's important to keep the two holes kind of separated evenly too, rather than throwing it like this. Um, if you have them this way, then your ball is going to roll a lot better. Just like in traditional holding, when you're going to move your feet to a certain way, same way with a ramp, you might want to move it over to a different position so that you're going to hit the pins a different way. Um, during assisted bowling, you're allowed to help your bowler however they need to to move this, um, but it is important to keep challenging them in order for them to understand why you're moving that ramp because at the end of days, we're hoping that they will be able to do this unassisted after they learn the basic skills. Peggy and I are on the same lane. We're gonna see, we kind of might talk about it. You can go first. So I'm gonna go up and bowl. And I'm not really going to because this lane's not on. So I get done and I'm coming back. Peggy can start getting her approach. Walk back so that that next person next to me can get rolling. 